Hello and welcome back to the Blues Focus podcast tonight. I'm once again glad to be joined by Jamie Lawler and Zach Woods. Good evening, lads. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. What an intro, by the way, Tommy. What an intro. Spicing things up. I like it. It's good. It's good. <laughs> How are you, Jamie, man? Well, yeah, I mean, life's great. Like, Birmingham City's a bit crap at the minute, but life's all right. Yeah, like... <laughs> That's the most positive. That's the most positive and happy I've ever seen Jamie in the uh, oh, intro of a video. That. That's a bit Work strange. shit, blues are shit, everything yeah. shit. That's what I'm usually <laughs> loves life now. Here in Manor. Yeah, I, I don't know how he's managed to turn up so perky after such a terrible result. <laughs> I've just uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. We've got some endorphins <laughs> kicking in. Uh, in today's episode, we'll be discussing that horrible 2 0 loss to Cardiff on Tuesday night, uh, what that means for the Huddersfield game. Uh, can we still win, or is another defeat incoming, particularly after Neil Warnock has now been appointed? And how we feel about about the club as a whole, really? Because uh, it was a dreary night, wasn't it? Uh, so, Zach, do you want to kick us off and get us into it? Yeah, it was. Uh, you're right in saying it was a, a dreary night. It was from such a high against West Brom at the weekend to such a low midweek against Cardiff. Um, I thought it really was a poor performance. Sometimes we'll lose games and it's quite unjust, but uh, midweek we were really, really poor. And it's not as if we were outplayed. Cardiff were nothing too special. Um, I think the pivotal thing in that game was Cardiff in the last 15, 20 minutes, they set up to attack. They wanted it. They wanted to uh, get their first win uh, since November, whereas we uh, set up at a five back for the last 15, 20 minutes, didn't we? We we certainly set up to play for the point, um, which I think is ridiculous against uh, such a, a weak side. Um, but Cardiff deserved it in the end because although the first 70 minutes we were both fairly even, um, they wanted they wanted it more in the last 20 minutes and, and they reaped the benefits for it. So a great free kick, as we said, from Perry NG um, and Robinson obviously scoring at the end. But yeah, it was just a poor night at the office for Blues. We never seem to win uh, midweek at St Andrews, do we? I don't think we have done this season. So yeah, it was mm. set up for a loss really, but just disappointing. I'm not too sure whether we haven't won a whole season in midweek. I don't think we've definitely not won in many. Um, no. I feel like we might have won a couple. I think at St Andrews, I don't think we have. Uh, uh, have we? No, in term, excluding Friday night games, because every fucking game this year has been a Friday night game. But a Tuesday, Wednesday game at St Andrews, I cannot remember. A, can't remember mm. a win. We might have done. That's not Lack very of good. research once again on the Blues Focus <laughs> podcast. It's not very good because because cons- oh god, there's too many C's in that bloody sentence. Considering there's the most of the games this season have been night games anyway. <laughs> that shows that we haven't won many games this season. Oh, I know, I know, man. Oh. I know. We've we've won a couple Friday nights. Uh, QPR, I think, was a Friday night. Obviously, Baggies was, but midweek games, Tuesday, Wednesday games, we just never seem to win. But yeah, in terms of Cardiff, it was just so poor, wasn't it? Jamie, thoughts? Like that, that, that is my summarization. Just <laughs> no, um, I just spat over myself. That's that's really lovely. Sorry. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> going to, the better team won, like Zach said. Like you can't argue with the facts. The better team won. I don't think we stronger shot a meaningful opportunity. Really, we just dicked about too much on the ball. We didn't look up for it. I'm confused as to where the team from four nights prior had gone. There was no press. We weren't on the front foot. The first ten minutes in, the lads I was in, we all looked at each other and went, "Ain't got a good feel about this, lads. This has got different and all over it, you know." Mm. No press. No wanting, no wanting to get on the ball. Hannibal tried his heart out, but you know, kind of. If if there's any players that come to mind that had a good game, it was Djokovic. Hannibal tried hard. Djokovic did his normal Djokovic way and actually had a good game. I thought he held the ball up well. No running support on him. No nothing. Uh, it was just a dead boring game and had nil nil written all over it. And a piece of quality was always going to change it. Can't True. fault how great that free kick was. It was absolutely stunning. Great goal. And then in typical Blues fashion, we go, oh, we're 1-0 down now. Right, we'll try and attack a little bit more now. <laughs> it was like the players were scared to shoot. We're getting the ball back 25 yards out from goal. No one's having a dig. We're just trying to pass it in. Just have a shot. It's it. Now, I'm going to avoid the fact that we played terrible, so I'm not going to whinge too much about the ref. Ref was a bit of a joke. But mm. I'm convinced that Jukovic needs to get like an old-school guillotine out and have his head decapitated before the ref even decides to foul on him now. Like... And then start like an anti Djokovic GFL thing going on here, like poor kid. <laughs> but no. like, what can you say? Like, we were crap. We ran out of ideas. It was like the long ball weren't working. We just got more confused as the game went on. And we just went, ah, oh, what can we do now? 
no one had a good game really apart from Duke. Unlucky, mm-hmm. one of them, move on and try and forget it ever happened. You know, we've let the team that are in the relegation so do a double over us, so typical blues. <laughs> that is so typical blues, honestly. <laughs> I mean, considering like at the start of the season, fair enough, you know, any sort of results is possible, yeah. but to, <laughs> to go and lose to Cardiff twice. I saw somebody in my comments on my vlog actually said, you lost to Cardiff with loads of laughing emojis afterwards. I was like, yeah, we actually did. Like, the, Honestly, they hadn't won since November 5th, I last checked, which is 13 games. I mean, I was fairly confident going into it. I thought the performance against Albion was a bit of a turning point, but, you know, because we capitalised off good chances that we were given. Um I don't know. The games weren't too dissimilar, to be honest. Really, I don't think they were. You know, the, the intensity from some of the attacks were pretty similar. Um, I just think what came down to the matter of fact was that we just didn't have the same quality as we did on that night against yeah. Albion, because we had really good possession. We kept the ball well. We forced mistakes from them, and we forced some mistakes against Cardiff on Tuesday night as well. We just didn't keep our own quality really you know we gave the ball away countless times misplaced passes you know uh heavy touches it was a couple of slice clearances there was definitely a remember a few of those you know it was i think that they won the game just because of how chaotic it was really and like you say touch of quality is all that that game needed really um and it's typical that they would come and beat us as well team hasn't won since november 5th like i said (laughs) We're like we're yeah. like Robin Hood. We give we give to the teams that are down there. Do you know what I mean? Like give take, take them the rich and give them the give to you the poor. Know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Blues way, isn't it? It's a Blues way. I think if you've uh, followed Blues for a decent amount of time, you'll know that that's no surprise really. It's it's just what <laughs> Blues do. We do all right against the bottom six. Uh, no, at the top six, struggle against the bottom six. But yeah, just just a night to forget. If you would have gave me Watford away on Tuesday, I would have probably been more confident than playing Cardiff. I just knew in typical... I said to her, how blues is this going to be that we've won two games in a row that we weren't meant to get anything from? We're going to get dicked here by Cardiff. Guarantee it. It just happened. <laughs> it was written yeah. in the stars as typical Birmingham City. What, the odds are in your favour? No. Nah. We've got yeah. Norwich next Tuesday, so that could be a possibility, couldn't it? Blues sort of still beat Norwich. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It, wouldn't surprise, it genuinely wouldn't surprise me that that's 100% something I could see blues doing. Um, yeah, oh god, we, we need to start picking up a, a, a few more points. I think I think that those six points against both Swansea and Baggies heavily helped us move a, a decent uh length away from the drop zone. I think it's eight points, eight or nine points we are uh from the relegation zone. So, you know, those six points were so crucial in hopefully mm-hmm. our fight for survival. Um, but yeah, we just need a few more. We've said it a few times, but 50 is a magic number, really, isn't it? So if we, can be, if we can be hitting that sooner rather than later, then we can enjoy the last few games of the season and, and watch Blues stress free. <laughs> All really stressful. What's that like? <laughs> Uh, mate, no, I, I, I it hasn't, that hasn't been the case for years, has it? Hasn't been the case. For, in fact, I'll tell you when it last was, and it was against West Brom. When we went two goals up, I I knew there and then we can just sit back and relax because there's no chance we're conceding now because the way we set up that game, we were so tight, so compact, kept the ball so well, pressed on the front foot. It's it's nuts how we saw just a completely different team on Tuesday within a matter of days. And that's the sad mm. thing at Blues, and that's why we struggle so much because we're such an inconsistent side, Will. Have a fantastic performance one week and then we'll completely butcher it the next. So that's what threw yeah. me off so much. I was like, where is the intensity I saw four days ago? And mm-hmm. I mean it's not like we were more tired. Cardiff played a day later than us as well, so there is no excuse for the lack of effort. I'm sorry to say I'm not a professional footballer, so I can't really comment. Yes, on this you are, stuff, Jamie. Don't don't doubt yourself. You, know you know need it out on the pitch right <laughs> now. Go on, get your times, boots on. I saw Lucas Jukovic running full sending at the Cardiff defence. Hannibal, and then Scott Ogre just sat there looking like a pissed off child. Oh, I'm fucking mad for it. Like, <laughs> run for the ball, press the play, you dick. Like, <laughs> just, just stood there. Oh, it's so infuriating. Honestly, I'm losing my head. There, there was a, there was a few things that wound me up on uh, against Cardiff. I'm sure. Same for you, fellas. Um, I thought the free kick, as fantastic as NG's free kick was, I thought it was very weak to concede. In oh, terms of, I can't, uh, avoid, like, sorry. I, I, I can't remember who Harley Dean fouled, but. Whoever it was, I mean, they were moving away from goal. They were, they looked like they were going out wide, and it just to sloppily stick a leg out like that. It was silly free kick to concede, and obviously they scored off the back of it. So there, there was so like you said, Tommy, there were countless mistakes uh, against Cardiff where sloppy passes giving the ball away. 
I think that free kick was a big mistake. Obviously, the final goal is a bit more understandable because we're just chucking bodies forward, aren't we? But yeah, too many mistakes, too sloppy, and it, it cost us the game. Before we uh, talk a little bit more about the Cardiff game in depth, uh, we've got this question from Paul who asks, is anyone else worried about some of the players simply use the Albion game on Sky as a shop window match, perhaps? Um, I imagine that sort of means it's like you play your best on TV and then when mm-hmm. it comes to the Cardiff game, they probably take the foot off the gas a little bit. So what do you guys think to that comment? I think, I suppose I beckon the question if that's the case, because 90% of the time in previous years, we've been absolutely dog shit on Sky Sports. So <laughs> the questions are beckon this year, maybe, because we won QPR, we beat Reading on Sky Sports. Uh, yeah. Huddersfield, first two games of the season, I think it was a Friday night. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Maybe we are using it as a bit of a shot window. Maybe the players are. Um, is it the does, shot window? Or... Does the question mean, like, in terms of are we... So it says, uh, simply use the Albion game on Sky as a as a shot window match. Is that saying we're showing... Because obviously we've had played so well. Is, is the comment trying to say we almost put our best talent on show for them to be taken in the so, summer? Yeah. Or, I think that's what the... the the yeah. comments saying i believe i believe it is and if so i think i think the thing with that is most our players are loans and let's be 100 percent honest with ourselves we know hannibal's going at the end of the season probably be as well he'll be wanted back by derby trusty maybe as well because he's been doing brilliantly for arsenal or he might go elsewhere sanderson as well let's be honest the majority of our loan players probably won't be here come the end of the season we might keep a player or two um, so I think whether we're playing on, on Sky Sports or not, um, and as well saying that, the ones who really performed against Baggies, Hannibal, Bielik, etc., they, they are lone players as well. Not many players that are actually ours put in a world-class performance who could go for five, six million. So, yeah, it's, it, it's always a tricky one when you perform well on TV because it, it is essentially saying to other clubs, look at how many talented players we have. These are available in the summer. But, um, yeah, it was... A great performance, but in terms of players coming and going at the end of the season, I think the majority of loans will go back. And then in terms of players that could be sold, I mean, did George Hall come on against Baggies? I think he did for a little bit, didn't he? Um, So, yeah, it is a bit of a shop window when you're performing on Sky because all the other clubs around the country can see how talented and how good of players you have. But I, I just think most loans will be gone by the end of the season anyway. Interestingly enough, actually, this has just come to me. We played Sunderland right before the World Cup, and that was on the telly. Yeah, and we was. put Joe Bellingham straight into the team out mm-hmm. of nowhere. So that might be something that's definitely on the on the conscience of some of the Blues board there, thinking that, you know, if Joe has a really good game tonight, it at least gets the bigger club's interest. You know what I mean? So it's like mm-hmm. he might not he might not be ready just yet, but that he's on the, he's on your radar now. So there's some potential in that question. It, it goes a bit deeper than it first looks like at first. But um, yeah. yeah, good question, Paul. Interesting. Um, let's talk about um, a bit more about the Cardiff game. Um, we don't want to talk too much about it. but One word comes to mind when I think of what the Cardiff game was missing. Kedra. Mm. How yeah. badly did we miss Kedra on yeah. Tuesday? Yeah. Screaming for it after about 10 minutes, all my mates up to me went, this is a Kedra game, this. This is yeah. just that electric pacing behind, man, because <laughs> Scott's offering dick all up top. Like, he's literally just stood there, like, you know, mm. that press game, though, works when you got someone quick. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think I think we were we were missing... A, we, I kept saying to my dad, we were missing a spark. We were missing some energy mm-hmm. across the entire pitch, not just the midfield, not just the front line, not just the defence. Everywhere across the pitch, we were missing a spark. I was crying out for the substitutions to come a little bit earlier yep, than they did, same. to be honest. Um, I think they were made it. a little too late. Um, I think at 60 minutes. I, I get I get why managers give players the first 15 minutes, first 10 minutes of the second half to change things. And, you know, just to you don't want to make changes too soon or too early, I guess, because it mm. can t- cha- like completely alter the dynamic or flow. And if things don't work, you want that for you want things not working for as minimal time as possible. But I think the changes needed to happen sooner because it clearly wasn't working. We needed a spark. We needed some energy from somewhere. And I think Kedra would have been perfect for Tuesday night. He's just got that pace. He's great on the ball. No one was really willing to take on players. No one was really showing for the ball. So I think I think you're right, Jamie. I think Kedra would have been perfect for Tuesday. I think the um I like you, I hundred percent I guess Tommy was the same. I was screaming for substance about the 50-50. At half time, I was just saying, get him off, get him off, get him on. 
But I think the issue lied is that when did we make ourselves? Probably 70, 75? I think it was, yeah, I think 70. Because that's because he made four at once, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Was it four at once? And I think they happened at 70. I think I think 10 minutes earlier and it could have been a different story. Well, I think um, the issue is they were stripped for 10 minutes. But I think, and I don't know if it's just me reading into it a little too much because I was trying to think what he's doing. They were stripped for 10 minutes. I think the issue is, is Cardiff were piling pressure and it was literally set piece, corner, set piece. And I think the golden rule of football usually is that you never make a substitution when you're defending a corner, ever. Mm. So I don't know if he was just doing that and kind of going, right, we're defending another set piece. We're under for deep pressure. I don't want to change up four players in while we've got a deep throw. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think he's probably mm. waiting for a safer position to change the game where he's up the pitch a little bit more. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. The only reason, because they were stripped. So, I mean, Gary Gardner was stripped from about the 55th minute. Mm. So I was literally like, well, he's, he's, I can literally see him. Like, he's there. He's ready to come on. So what are they doing? Yeah, Deeney had his shirt off and he was getting ready as well. Yeah, um, yeah there was a few players, weren't there? Yeah, I don't know what you mean now. Yeah. I think they also, just needed to happen earlier. They just they yeah, just needed to happen 100%. earlier. And I, I think another thing that screwed us over was I think I mentioned it earlier, but I think that the, the change to a back five, it just changing to a back five in the middle of the game essentially said to Cardiff, we're happy with a point. We're gonna sit deep now, we're gonna invite the pressure and we're gonna yeah, defend and play this. for the point, which I think just isn't the way to go about it at all. And I think nine nine eighty to ninety percent of the decisions Eustace makes, I think, are spot on and perfect. Um I think it, it, he did get a lot wrong against Cardiff. I think the subs were too late, and I think the decision. I mean, hindsight's a wonderful thing. If if you know if it worked, we'd be praising him to the heavens. So I'm not slating him too much, um, but I think just changing to a back five says to the other team, "We want you to come at us now. We will take a point." And I think that's a poor mentality to have, um, given how poor Cardiff have been so far. And uh, Jordan James got his mandatory two minutes at the end as well. <laughs> I think yeah. he come on like the 88th minute. Poor man, something. honestly, the poor man. Poor he kid. deserves more game time, doesn't he? He deserves at least 10 minutes, <laughs> at least 10, <laughs> not two. Yeah, it's, it's it's a shame for him. I think there's just too many talented players who are ahead of him. Because for me personally, I'd probably rather every player who was on the pitch over him, I'd probably rather George Hall. And that's certainly not taking away from Jordan James, because I think he's still a fantastic player. I just think there's a good amount of competition in his positions at Blues. So it's just difficult for him to get in the team, really. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Also, just I don't want people to think I'm just banging light on about Scott Hogan here and his effort. I get what he's about and I get he's a goal poacher. And I get his whole job is 12-yard box. Tap it in, score your goals, finish, cool. But it just frustrated me a little bit. I get that it's not what his game is 90% of the time, and I get he's mm. not there to be that pressing centre forward. I get he's there for the clinical centre forward. But I just think sometimes there's some fucking yeah. nothing in. Yeah. <laughs> he did, yeah. though, earlier in the season. He was really pressing yeah. the front. He hasn't yeah. been the same since injury, has he? No. No, no, not at all. He's been... Uh, uh, to be honest, he's been he's been poor. He's been really poor. In fact, he he seems very quiet and absent in games. Um, he doesn't seem to be getting involved. And you're right. At the start of the season, the first ten games, I remember Hogan really was pressing from the front and closing down defenders really well. I I wouldn't be. It may be used as is instructed him to sit off and not do that as such. Um, I'm not quite sure the reasons why. Um, but yeah, he's he's not been the same player at all. I think he scored one. One goal since he's come back from his yeah. injury, and that was a penalty. Um, and it was arguably he, nearly saved. Yeah, it <laughs> was. He he knows he'll know he's not been good enough. Um, and everyone can agree he hasn't been good enough because he he simply hasn't been good enough. He's just mm. not getting involved. He's not scoring the goals. He's not doing his job. Um, but hopefully Scott Hogan goes very hot or cold. So hopefully he's got a good period coming up for him because he my, needs. My cousin to said this to me. My cousin said, Jay, this is the same lad who will go on now and score seven goals in a row when he gets his confidence yeah. back. Like, just yeah, exactly. We're in that Hogan form, awesome. aren't we? So hit and miss, isn't he? So hit and I, miss. I think he needs a rest. So I think we've rushed him back a little bit too early. I think an extra two weeks. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say maybe do a 4-3-3 on Saturday at Huddersfield. Start Manny on one wing. Start Chung on the other. Kedra's not fit. And just go for it. Yeah, mm. it can always it can always uh, mould into a four two three one as well. So yeah. there's options for that as well. What were your sort of uh, feelings around the Cardiff game afterwards? Because obviously, it's a very conflicting emotion from the West Brom game when at the end we were dancing around singing to um, uh, food for thought. But obviously, a couple of days later, and we're back to feeling miserable. The grounds half nearly empty. 
Um, what what were your guys' thoughts on um, how you felt afterwards? The, compare the two from each other, how you felt. Yeah. I had this again. I had this conversation with my dad, but um, I just said to him, coming out of the ground, it's unbelievable how we can go from such a high to such a low in the matter of days. Because I, I, I said this um, in the last one. I said West Brom game is one of my favourite Blues games ever, and it's one of the best performances I've ever seen from Blues. And I'm, I'm sticking by that. Obviously, I haven't supported them as long as yourselves, but in the eight years I have, um, it, it, I can't tell you how good West Brom was. I don't think people are they're, they're appreciating the result, but not necessarily the performance in that. I said it last time, but there wasn't a 60-second spell where Baggies looked like they were going to score. We were so tight. We pressed so well. We set up so well. Cardiff, completely different. And it's the contrast of coming out the ground that after Baggies. And then, I mean, I didn't even stay for this. As soon as that second goal went in, I walked out. And I'd say 90% of fans walked out as well. I, I watched your vlog, Tommy. It was The game was still going on. It was practically empty in there. So... Mm. Yeah, it's such a shame how how inconsistent we can be because you go from feeling so good and on top of the world. And I was so excited for Cardiff and Huddersfield on um, after the Baggies game. Now, I, I don't want to make the trek up to Huddersfield because I know it's probably going to be a similar thing. So, yeah, just really disappointing. Jamie? Just typical Birmingham City, isn't it? Like, I just, I walked out, like, just like, <laughs> there it is. There it is, performance of the season, followed by the worst performance of the season. What do you expect? Oh, we were mm. meant to win this game. Nah. <laughs> Too easy. Yeah. It's just piss take, isn't it? Like, we're never going to do it simple, boys. It's never going to happen. Like, literally, I just, I would just gobsmack because I just walked out of the ground the lads after and I just went, well, there we go. There it is. Yeah. I had that yeah. feeling all day, but an hour before kickoff, I was sat in the roof having a pint and I said, the lads I went, I've just got that feeling. They're going to win. They're going to dick us. I text my mate who's a Cardiff fan. I'll literally send you screenshots. Tell me after if you haven't. It's literally just says, I think you're going to win 1-0, by the way. I've just got that feeling. Like, mm. just, you just expect it. You know, I, it's one of them. Though. It happens. It's annoying. But I just want... I wouldn't mind if we lost and played well. <laughs> yeah. Mm, I think there's yeah. been very few games like that this season. We had a draw against Burnley. Uh, actually, no, we had Norwich at home. We lost two one. That was we played well in that game. The game we've a game we've lost and played well. Controversially, I'd say Wigan at home. Yes, they were uh, down to ten men, um, and yes, it was infuriating how we didn't score in that game. But actually, I remember for about seventy minutes, the the well, as soon as the red card happened, I think it might have been a bit earlier. We actually created a lot of chances and kept the ball well, as expected against ten men. Um, but I'd say, yeah, performances we've lost and played well. I'd say, I, I'd say Wigan's won. Um, in terms of others, I can't think of a load to be honest. Blackburn away, Blackburn away. Yes, of course, we lost that game and played oh. well, didn't we? And that's the thing, that's Cardiff. It. We didn't play well. We deserve the loss. So, and and yeah. like I said earlier, I don't think Cardiff were that special. They just last twenty minutes. They took the game to us. So, yeah, just oh, it's typical Blues, isn't it? A bit of a soul searching question this is obviously there's no so, uh, no sign that the club is going to be picking up anytime soon how bad does it have to be and have, have to get in order for you to stop going to the games oh nah that nah, never i think oh, i said I it I, I yeah i said i think i said it last podcast but i don't care if blues are playing sunday league or premier league as as long as there's always a club to go to and a blues to always watch then I'm happy. So, mate, we could be playing in oh, Chernobyl and it could be an absolute mess, but I'd, I'd still go along and watch him. So I don't think it could ever get so bad uh, that, that we'd stop going. Yeah, like, I get it. The club is in an absolute disarray at the minute. I get that. But I also think about the 11 lads who walk out there every week and put our shirt on and, you know, try and make us proud. Because that's at the end of the day, that's what they're doing. They're trying to give you some pride of your football team, aren't they? They're trying to get a win, don't get me wrong. Footballers are selfish people, but they're wearing yeah. our shirt, you know, and we have to support that and we have to back the boys. Mm -hmm. So I could never not go to the games, you know, don't get me wrong, I miss my game or two, but, you know, people are busy. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Does yeah. it? Is there another sort of thought that goes through your head maybe about the um, ownership and giving more money to them and trying to... Um, yes, of course. In that? Of course, of course there is. And that, that does infuriate me. But, you know, yeah. It's, uh, a I, I, place. it's a difficult dilemma, that one, because 
I saw, um, don't know if you guys read Small Heath Alliance, but I saw something at the uh, start of the season and someone was saying, look, if you're buying a season ticket this season, you're giving money to the owners, you're supporting them, that ground should be empty week in, week out. We should, you know, really take a stand. And it's a really tricky one because, yes, you want to support the players on the pitch, um, but we, we also don't necessarily want to support BSHL. But the the club needs money. Like, as much as BSHL aren't investing and aren't putting the money in the right areas and keeping supposedly a lot of it for them themselves the club needs money if all of us just stop going all of a sudden the 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 amount of income the club would lose is unbelievable like let, let let's let's think about this logically i don't know how many were there against cardiff 12 13 000 maybe 14, something like that it was. Fourteen thousand. less times that by 20 which is two hundred eighty thousand. something like that there's something along those lines I'm don't look me for math, math. I'm it's, look it's something along those lines um, let's let's round it up to three hundred thousand on a good day, maybe three fifty thousand. Imagine if every game the club just didn't get that money. We couldn't pay the players' wages. We couldn't pay the staff. Like things would be mayhem. So it's a tricky one. I understand why people say don't go to games because you're giving them money, but the club also need money to survive and thrive. If we all just stop going all of a sudden, how are the players going to get paid? How are the staff going to get paid? Paid? And this is the thing: is you've got to almost think of it as a business as well a business needs money to survive a football club needs money mm -hmm. to survive in order to get that revenue fans need to be buying the season tickets buying the match day tickets buying the programs buying the merchandise so yeah i get people's points but i, I for me i i just want to keep going and supporting the players on the pitch i get mm -hmm. it but these are all going to be the same people who hype themselves into the ground about playing west brom at home and then all of a sudden appear out of woodwork like no not having it. Mm. Oh, you don't tell me I'm not a real fan because I'm just paying money into a football club that's dying, according to some people. That's fine. But then when it's a derby game, everyone appears out the woodwork. Piss off. Mm. Like, mm. not a chance. I, I'm, I'm entitled to go to a football match. I want to go to a football match. Yeah. But I'm feeling like I'm paying mm. for my football club to die at the end of the day. I work a stressful job. I want to go and watch the football. Well, granted, Birmingham City isn't a stress relief at the best of times, but... <laughs> You know, it's nice to do something and go out and have your mates and go to the football with them. So if people think I'm a bad fan because I'm supporting, do you think, does any Birmingham City fan go to that game to support fucking, what you call them, who run the club, BSHL? Not a chance. Of course. We go because we support a football team, not because we support the board. Yeah, that's a good point. I like that. I like how you say that you've, you work a stressful job, so you're going to watch the Blues to try and relieve yourself a bit of stress. I understand that <laughs> lately, actually. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's it's a, it is a real dilemma. I was thinking about this the other day. I was thinking, you know, because I'm always supportive of the team. I'm always wanting them to win, and it's 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 that tif difficult dilemma, isn't it? Where if the stadium is still not fixed next season, we've still not put any money into the team, so we can't actually buy any players. You know, like, am I still going to be in support of this? You know, when I know that the owners are not fully investing into the club it's a difficult dilemma let us know what you think we'll put a poll up in the uh, top right hand corner um whether how bad things actually no because it's a yes or no um I, we'll, we'll, we'll phrase it actually if uh, what 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 might be a, like um, um i I, th I think it'd be good to say um uh do you think boycotting get oh i don't know it's a tricky one it's a tricky mm. one we'll figure it out we'll figure it out and we'll put it in the top right corner <laughs> I think. Do you, do think you go to games because you love BSHL so much? <laughs> Everyone's going to say no. No one's going to say yes. Like the two percent, like the couple of no. Villa fans who watch this podcast, just to laugh. I think. I think good questions to ask and would be to comment below is how bad would Blues have to get for you to stop going to games? Yeah. Um, I'd hope the majority of answers are, uh, you know. It can get so bad that I wouldn't not go to games. I think, you know, no matter how bad your football club is going, I think you should always try and go if you can. And I think another good question to ask is um, the one we were just on, which, uh, what was it again? The, uh, oh, I can't remember. You know, we've just spoken about so much in five minutes. My brain is gone. It is maybe, gone. Maybe, do you think boycotts will work? I think they will, yeah, you know, because yeah. you starve the club of money and then you can't run the business, can you? But as well, it's like, you know, it's it, it is difficult, and trying to word it's even more difficult because you know how you feel about things, but then you try and say it, and it's like, well, there's this to consider, and there's that to consider. There's the ground that is obviously not being fixed, but there again, w w the people who are working there, are, I don't know. It's it's all a big minefield, really. Mm -hmm. We just need to um, 
Uh, we just sort of need to get behind the team, but continue to demonstrate that we don't want the board in charge anymore. And you know, that's simple as. I think the best way we do it is how we did it against West Brom, how you did it in that protest. Yeah. That is the best way to do it. It was on Sky. It got coverage. People know about it. Surely the EFL have to start looking at this. Does anyone want them to? Probably not, because they're probably going to get a fucking point deduction. But I don't, something needs to be done now. I don't really keep up on... I don't have like EFL updates or anything. I don't subscribe to like a newsletter that they have. But I still, in the general feel of anything, nothing on Twitter has suggested to me that there is any type of investigation going on at all. I, I've not have heard No, nothing. I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen Maybe a single thing that there's anything going on. Really, it sounds stupid what I'm about to say, but everyone knew, everyone, no one knew Man City was being investigated for four years until it's come out in the last two months that there mm. has been a secret investigation. Yeah, you're but not wrong. We know that. There could be an investigation that's been going on for up to a year now that no one knew anything about and there could just be Digging and finding, digging and finding. Mm. What if there is a hurry the fuck up because we want our yeah. club back? So stop taking ages. There's clearly something wrong with BSHL. Clearly, you only have to walk into the stadium to know mm, this club's not being run quite, yeah. quite right here. You don't even it? have to go that deep about it. It's a walk into St Andrews. You have to read the news and go, why is John, why, John, why is Paul Richardson a Birmingham City fan who was going to take over the club backed out? It's mm. that simple. Obviously, I know. Mm. Obviously, there is reasons he can't say, and that is understandable because of legalities. But surely that is a fucking red alert to the EFL mm. going. A Birmingham City fan was about to take over the club there, and he's backed out all of a sudden, very sharpish. Something Mate, is yeah, the, the 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 number of protests, how discontent we've been yeah. for the last seven eight years as well. Like it's so blatantly obvious that this club is is ran poorly. Um, and the fact that EFL are doing very, very little to help us get our club back or truly discover what's going wrong and what BSHL are doing is is a joke. Obviously, we've said it a few times, we don't 100% know what's going on behind the scenes, so we can't say categorically. Um, but it seems pretty obvious from the outside looking in that there's 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 things going on at Blues that shouldn't be happening and it's not being run properly and mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff. So we just need the help and support from the EFL, which we just don't seem to be getting. But hopefully you're right, Jamie. They've been investigating Blues for the last 10 years and something will come out tomorrow and they'll, uh, they'll kick them out. Oh, fingers crossed, man. Fingers crossed. Uh, let us know what your ideas and sort of thoughts are on the protests going forward. You know, are you in favour of them? Um, if you've got any suggestions and ideas for stuff, you know, because we're all in this together as Blues fans, you know, we're as Blues focus, of course, you know, we're just one fan channel out on the internet, but we are all Blues fans. Um, so we are wanting the best for the club. So, you know, get the conversation started. Start it up on Twitter, you know, get interested. Right? And it doesn't have to be marches in the streets. It doesn't have to be storming the pitch. Obviously, that didn't happen, but it doesn't have to be those things. It can be loads of other things. There's millions of different ways to protest. And we can do it peacefully, like we always have really done, to be honest. Like the majority of us have always done it very peacefully. Uh, we were didn't we were doing it on Friday night against West Brom, um, but yeah, get the conversation started again. Keep the uh, keep the intensity going. Don't let them get off the hook because we did something good on Friday night. It it, it sort of it's um, it was a little bit laid back against Cardiff. It's understandable, you know. We beat West Brom very well, and it was a good night, a good celebration. Um, but of course. You don't want it also to make it look like we're just reacting whenever we lose, of course, because then it makes it look like we're just, you know, being a bit petty. But keep the keep the intensity up. We need BSHL out. Simple as. Yeah, completely agree. I like, sorry, just say I like what you said there in um, uh, don't just do it when we lose as well. I think that's really good because um, a lot of the time we we'll want BSHL out. We'll go on a good run. It will all go quiet. And then when we start losing again, the protests pick up again. Um, yep. So I completely agree in, in this momentum just needs to continue now until they're gone. I think it needs to hurry up quickly as well because I have been noticing and I don't want to be you know melodramatic here or stirring any controversy, but I've been seeing a lot of Blues fans starting to turn on each other really just because of the continued frustration with it really. I feel like people are trying to get their own points across so, so much that they end up falling out with one another. And it's it's a bit of a... It's, it's disappointing to see, obviously, but... You know, that's why we need to get the owners out and then we don't have to have these issues. And and I think nights like Tuesday nights won't feel as dire or dramatic. You know what I mean? Because we've come off the back of two wins. We then lose that game. It's like, ah, oh, typical blues. 
it doesn't feel like the end of the world, does it? No, no. If if that was our fourth loss on the bounce, it, it, it certainly would. And I agree with you. It is sad because I've noticed it as well. Some Blues fans turning on each other, but you just got to remember we're one big family. We're all in this together. We all want the best for Blues. We don't want, you know, we all want the best for the club and we just want us to progress and move forward. So, yes, people will have different opinions. We'll have, we'll have different opinions to each other. Our viewers will have different opinions to us, mm -hmm. but just got to remember that we all want the best for the club. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like we're the second city in England. Do you know what I mean? Like there's a massive fan base. Everyone's gonna have a different opinion about something. Everyone's gonna clash. But it's, I'm I'm guessing ninety nine point nine percent of Birmingham fans though all want the same thing, which is them out. Do mm -hmm. we all go about it in a roundabout way? Fuck yeah. But we all want the same thing. We want them out. It's that simple. Let's um segue this into the Huddersfield game then. Uh, so I've got a question here from As. Uh, how do you think we how do you think we should approach the game on Saturday following the card of results? We know we are uh, sorry, we know we aren't a side capable of playing through teams, so would a change of shape benefit us more away from home? We did touch on this a little bit earlier. Yeah, I think it's a, a, a good point. A change of shape. Um, certainly stick with the back four because we play four at the back, nil nil Cardiff. We go to five at the back, two nil Cardiff. So um, <laughs> it's not rocket science to know there that uh, a four at the back certainly seems favourable at the moment. Um, we played it against Baggies as well, didn't we? Um, yeah, I think a change of the shape could be beneficial in terms of going forward. As I said, four at the back still the same, but. Yeah, potentially wingers higher up the pitch, maybe more of an overload in midfield with a three. We, we potentially suggested four, three, three. I uh, think it certainly depends on who's fit and who's not fit. Um, obviously, Kedra and Long potentially coming back. But yeah, I think um, maybe something different would benefit us because Cardiff, did, although for the first 70 minutes when we played four at the back, uh, it was nil-nil. It didn't work going forward because I think we had one shot on target all game. And I'm I'm a hundred percent believer in if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And then if it's not working, something needs changing. So yeah, let's try something different and let's let's see how we can get on against against Huddersfield. Neil Warnock's first game in charge, if I'm not wrong. I don't think he took him last night, did he? Yeah. Hmm. That worries me. <laughs> that worries me. Too, me mate. Me like, too. Colin Wanker. That's an anagram of his name. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. No, it, worry, it worries me too. I think um, a new manager bounce is 100% a real thing. When a new manager comes in, teams tend to do well. Um, and I think Neil Warnock being the character he is, the manager he is, I think, um, and especially them being at home, actually, I think it is quite dangerous for us. Um, and it would be so blues, to, as I said, to pick up results against Swansea and West Brom and then lose to the bottom four. So, um Look, we'll have to see. Um, I think a change of shape would benefit us. Um, stick with four at the back and hopefully uh, Huddersfield don't have too much of a new manager bounce because uh, we certainly want to do them over. Oh, it's going to be painful. The ball's going to be on the ground for about five minutes out of the 90, I guarantee it. Completely correct, mate. Not We're not going to see that ball touch the ground once. <laughs> no, it's going to be brutal. It's before the game, you suddenly realise Mark Roberts is in the team as well. Yeah, God, <laughs> He's back from injury. <laughs> no, don't even joke about it, Tommy. <laughs> Not in the mood. Giving me flashbacks already. <laughs> Resign Re Michael Morrison on a game-by-game -game contract basis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Uh, score predictions for the game? <laughs> it's so difficult, isn't it? It's, this is a re you're right. This is a really difficult oh. game to predict. And I, I can't, I, I would never go on a Blues Focus pad and say we're going to lose unless it's on Man City or Liverpool. That's my issue. I'm too, I'm too like optimistic in life. Uh, one nil Blues, why not? It's just, just shit out of Jukovic one nil because the amount that guy, kid has grafted in the last four weeks, he's earned a winning goal in a game. He's earned mm -hmm. one. Play so, four three three. Play right. to his strengths. Let him be a shit house, and we'll win a game. Play to him and run off him when he gets the ball, and you've got a chance. Yeah. Don't disagree. I think um, I'm really struggling to predict this one because I think it could go a million and one ways. I think uh, I think we could beat Huddersfield given how choppy and changey our form. I, I think it heavily depends on the team. But if we play like we did against West Brom, we will ease past Huddersfield with ease. If we play like we did against Hardiff, Cardiff, we'll get battered. Neil Warnock, manager bounce. Oh, it's so unpredictable, this one. Oh, I think I'm going to do a Tommy and sit on the fence. I'm going to go... <laughs> 
I'm going to go 1-1 just because I genuinely cannot predict it. I have no idea if Huddersfield will be a completely new team under Neil Warnock. It's their first game. It's at home. But I don't know if we're going to play like we did against Baggies or or Cardiff. I don't know how the team's going to look. I think it's going to change quite a bit after after Tuesday. So I cannot predict this one. So I'm just going to go safe and go 1-1. Uh, sorry, sorry, Tommy. I know you're about to say something. I was just thinking about the Cardiff game. Did anyone else notice the moment Troy walked onto the pitch? The ref pulled him straight away for a chat. Troy walked <laughs> on that pitch and looked pissed off. <laughs> like you can see the rage in his eyes. So watch it, if you watch it back. Troy walks on the pitch and he goes straight over to the ref. I was like, the ref just called him over. Like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> what That's brilliant. That what was that Probably. about? I don't know. It was about a minute. Did you not say when Troy first walked on? You seen talking to the ref for a good minute. I don't know if he walked over to the ref or the ref just went, "You come here." Like <laughs> Troy walked on and the... he looked furious. I think because maybe there was no effort in the team. He looked pissed off when he walked on that pitch. Mm. Maybe because of the, I don't know, the Darla, the fur, furlong thing earlier in the uh, West Brom game. We probably oh, just yeah. pulled when the way he pulled him over. He might have done. He might have, the referee might have just gone to him and just go, "Come over here. You're not doing that in this game." Yeah, <laughs> listen. No, I've already stopped Bailey knocking someone out today. None of that. <laughs> but sorry, yeah. carry on, Tommy. Uh, I hate doing these predictions. I can see it being very similar to the Cardiff game. To be fair. Um, it's, Similar teams, you know, and with their new manager bounce, I could probably see almost a similar game, if not exactly the same game. Yeah, and I'm going to go 2-1 Huddersfield, just because I feel like we're in this sort of weird form now where we can be so up and down. I feel like Huddersfield, they've got that a little bit more at the moment in terms of the good feels around the club and everything. And I feel like Neil Warnock... He's been in what he's been in the job for a couple of days now, so he'd have been talking to the players, getting them feeling good. So I imagine that he'll come in, get a winning start, um, and yeah, I don't know. It's I don't know who can score for us. That's the really horrible thing. Yeah, We've, yeah. We scored two goals against West Brom, which were pretty. I mean, they, they were preventable. Let's be honest. The goalkeeper should have done better. Um, we didn't score against Cardiff. The goals we scored against Swansea, one was a penalty that was not a penalty and should have been saved. Second goal was good. You know, Chong got away. That was a good goal. I feel like we could get them on the counter-attack. Um, I think most of our best goals this season have been through counter-attacks. Um, and then the last two goals with Duke and Trusty, um, obviously with just any chance in the air, in the air really. Um so really, from set pieces, we are a bit of a danger. And also on the attack, I reckon we are a danger as well. Um, but set pieces, we can also be absolutely atrocious with. Um, I, where I feel like on the attack, we are quite dangerous. You know, we do make some good chances from that. And I feel like four two three one, 2 one Manny Longello on the left, uh, uses his skill to get past players. Um, then that might create a chance. So I feel like we could maybe do it, but, you know, because obviously it's a difficult game to predict. But if I'm going realistically and trying to come from an unbiased opinion, then I think Huddersfield probably have the tiny little advantage over us. Yeah, and now you've said that, I'm going to completely agree and I'm going to say 2-1 as well. And I didn't want to come on here and uh, say, because I, I, I think I said a, a loss against Baggies as well, and I feel like I've been saying too many losses recently. But now you've said it, Tommy, I'm going to completely agree with you. Purely just for the fact that I agree in that there's a new manager bounce. I think Huddersfield being at home is big. Um, I think there'll be a feel-good factor around Huddersfield uh, off the back of that. I feel we'll struggle to pick up from where we left off against left off against West Brom. Um, I think a couple of injuries. I think Kedra being out is massive at the moment, uh, a massive loss. Um, mm. And I think away from home, we just tend to struggle. So, yeah, yeah. I'm going to agree with a 2 one. I wanted to say a loss is a Blues, but I felt bad for doing it. But now you've done it, I'm going to agree. 2-1 Huddersfield. <laughs> Hiding behind me. <laughs> <laughs> but just, but just going with the heart, uh, the heart, Jamie, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want to say it. Scum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a bit of a, a tiny little bit of a segue before we wrap this up. Uh, if we lose on Saturday, are we back in the relegation scrap? Yes. Well, um, yeah, I mean, this week was a massive chance for us to completely fuck up the relegation zone, weren't it? We could have, if we beat both teams this week, if we beat Cardiff and Huddersfield, we actually basically cement the relegation battle. But mm. if we've let Cardiff win and then now we beat Huddersfield, let's say on Saturday, we've absolutely mugged Huddersfield clean off. 
So yeah, if we yeah, I think we are. We're pretty much scrap. We're not quite in a relegation scrap, but I think we're now looking over shoulder situation. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, no, I agree. I I, I think um my worry is is there's still about 14, 13 games left mm. of the season. That's plenty of time for us to slip up and plenty of time for teams to uh pick up some points. So I, I wouldn't say we're we're comfortable until there's two, three games left of the season. I think we can 100% still be drawn into something. Um, let's be real, we've lost five on the bounce once, once this season. I could see it happening again at the moment. It's just, it's, 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 a, I don't want to be too reactionary because West Brom was fantastic, but I think that was a, a bit of a once in a blue moon thing, given how we've performed really uh, after the World Cup. So, yeah, I, I think there's still plenty of time for us to be drawn into something here, and it does concern me, to be honest. Mm -hmm. mm. Are we bad enough to get relegated? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Look at that performance against Cardiff. You're telling me that's a championship side. It was dire. It was awful. It's so, it's so messed up. West Brom, we look like a fucking Premier League team. And against Cardiff, we look like a League One side. So just such inconsistencies. I think consistency is key in football. We're so unbelievably inconsistent. I, mm -hmm. I think it, it could it could... We could be inconsistent for a bit too long at some point, I think, before the season ends. And I think it could cost us greatly. But... Oh, just fingers crossed, boys. We're able to pull it out of the bag and survive. We've just lost our edge at the minute. And I don't know. Like, uh, this was the massive point that annoyed me against Cardiff. No one wants to shoot. Well, like, I, I, I don't point. understand. Maxine picked up the ball at one point. I think edge of the box on the right hand side. He's a right footed right back. Just have a pop. And he tried to pass it back out wide again. I was just like, just fucking hit it. Just hit the ball. It's nil nil, 75th minute at this point. This was when the game opened. It was end, uh, end to end. Just want to have a, have a crack. And then mm -hmm. Chong and Bakuna were doing back flicks to each other and lost the ball. I was just like, oh, fuck off. We're playing like just Arsenal. Like, just no one wants to shoot at the minute. I don't understand it. It's like only, only Djokovic and Hogan can have a shot. Just hit it. <laughs> just hit mm. the ball. Like Bakuna, we've seen this season, can absolutely hit it. I mean, how many times has Bielik, like been that close to banging one from 30 yards top bins? Is that a dick? It's as well, it gets the ball back into the crowd, so there's anything yeah. that can happen then. The most entertaining thing in that second half was Bielik nearly sparking one of the other players out. The whole crowd got <laughs> up and roiled then. And all, the ref lost the game because of that as well. Yeah. It just, yeah, the ref wasn't great. We do need to have a bit more edge to us. We do need mm -hmm. to get more attacking. We need to be a bit braver. And, you know, like the way we played against West Brom, I was like, where's this gone? You know, where's yeah. the attitude gone? Where's the forward thinking play gone? You know, we were making so many chances in that first half against the Albion. Like Chong's efforts, it was just, um, I think the keeper saved it. Um, mm -hmm. It was none of that. Anything like just a couple of chances here and there, get some shots off, pop them away. You know, just there was nothing. There was too much cautious football. And we, we stooped to their level, I feel like, because they weren't great at all. Um, it was just that one free kick that really stood out for them, really. Um, yeah. Aside from that, they were pretty poor, to be honest. I got the only is, you know, Cardiff for that team, if you go one and up against them, they would have fucking crumbled. They yeah. would have crumbled. That's what's more annoying. If you get that first goal, they would have got shit on about 4 0. I guarantee it. They've seen you haven't won in 13 games. Yeah. They would have fell mm. apart in seconds. Mm. Yeah, completely agree. They would have. It's so hard to win games from losing positions because you know you don't only need one goal, you need two goals. So yeah, I completely agree. It was, I mean, if we started on the front foot at the start of the season, we seemed to start brilliantly first fifteen minutes. Now it just seems lackluster, and we're letting teams take take the game to us as we did in the last twenty minutes, particularly. So yeah, it's just infuriating how. You'd think a, a team like Cardiff and we're at home and we're off the back of a great, great win, we try and take the game to them a bit more, but we didn't. We we were we were quite passive and last 20 minutes we, we set up defensively and it, it cost us. Mm. Let's end there this was... part. I'm so done of talking about Cardiff. I've had enough. Yeah. I've had enough. Unfortunately, one thing we've got to talk about at the end here is, um, of course, the Troy Deeney incident towards the end yeah. of the game. Um I really don't want to talk about this because obviously no. it's never nice to talk about it anyway. It was it was bearable with Neil Etheridge because obviously it's from the other fans, but when it's your own fans, it just feels like it was. Uh, for those that don't know, Troy Deeney was uh, racially abused by one of our own fans uh, in the Gil Merrick on the Tuesday night game. Um, I really don't want to talk about it because it's 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 pissed me off that that's happened really because 
I always thought the Blues fans had a touch of class about them, but obviously it's just this one guy or whoever it is that's um, obviously made him look like a right bell end, really. Um, but yeah, I, I don't want to talk about it, to be quite honest. It's really frustrated me when I saw it this morning because with all the Blackburn fans, was like, uh, I, I was kind of like in the back of my head at the time, I was like, you are. At least we will never do that. And then a couple of games later, and it has. It's like, oh, for God's sake! It's yeah, no, I, I, it's, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's just the fact people get that up. Like we love blues, of course, but at the end of the day, it's, it's twenty two blokes on a football pitch kicking a piece of leather. Like yeah. you don't need to get that upset, and and to do it towards your own player and to, oh mate, it's just, just, don't, just ban him from blues. Just he's not a proper fan. He's just there to. Cause havoc and be a knobhead. Just, just it's so simple. Just find out who did it, whoever did it, just ban them and sort it. Because the sad thing is, it gives us as Blues fans a bad reputation, and it really yeah. does. A select few, a small minority, three, four, five people, can make your whole football club and your whole fan base look like hooligans and arseholes. When in reality, it's just a select few people. So yeah, ridiculous shouldn't happen. Just ban them and. and I mean, Tro- Troy's a, a big enough character to not let it affect him in, in terms of his footballing life, his personal life. He'll crack on with it, like the, the strong-minded character he is. But yeah, it's just ridiculous. It's still happening, really. We said that about the uh, Blackburn fans, didn't we? When uh, the, when the, those group of people were abusing Etheridge behind the goal, um, pretty much just like it doesn't represent their whole fan base because um, mm. that was obviously, you know, something out Small of the blue as well. Of people. Yeah, I just don't understand what forced them to do it really oh. obviously i i was up the other end of the ground i didn't even know it had happened really um it was it was actually the story was released yesterday i think it was wasn't it because they, i saw they it on troy's facebook page wednesday i think mm. no mm. I, I saw it on yeah troy because obviously i follow him on facebook because you know bad man and uh i literally just saw this long post from him and i was like what's this site and yeah. i read it and i was like what yeah. Like it's just I mean, there's no fucking place for it at all. I no. like at all like and the Blackburn fans who did to Etheridge the same thing like bang out of order and even Blackburn fans are like no it's disgusting. Mm. I'm not being funny. I don't care who it is. I like, I don't care who like whatever player it is who's pissed you off, lads. It's not on to anyone. It's not fucking acceptable. The man's got a Birmingham bass tattooed on his chest. He's your club captain and he wears his art on his sleeve for the club. But there is no excuse at all. You're not a fucking fan. Fuck off. Don't come back to St. Andrews, you piece of shit, like, at the end of the day. I hope they find who it is. And I hope you get fucking banned for life. He's an arsehole. Absolute dickhead. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, Summed it up nicely. Yeah. <laughs> In a very eloquent way. <laughs> yeah, it's true, though, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? I hope it yeah, doesn't affect right. Troy. I you're hope it right. doesn't affect Troy because it is, it's not on what's happened. And it will. It'll hurt him. He's had, he, said it, yeah. he said it himself on that post. I've had it many times. Don't get me wrong. I've had it in my career, unfortunately. But to have it from your own fans is just... Yeah, yeah. As well. yeah you're not wrong. No place for it anyway, don't get me wrong. But it it's, a, it's a double kick in the in the teeth, isn't it, when it's one of your own fans, really, isn't it? Yeah. It's just been yeah. a complete negative podcast, hasn't it? And very little feel-good vibes about this podcast. Maybe we yeah. should do a, a better feel one next yeah. week. <sighs> Well, that's up to you, Blues. How you do it at this field will determine how the podcast goes. Anything else before we wrap up? I think we're good. Uh, week three of asking Manny Longello to uh, give that one to follow. On yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Almost oh, forgot. Man. Almost forgot. Thank you, Manny Longello. Your follow is much appreciated. Has he followed you? <laughs> no. I'm, ah. just saying it for, I'm just saying it for when he does. Oh, right, I see. <laughs> you got me surprised, and I was like, wait, is no. that your apology? No, he hasn't. He hasn't, yeah. Has, yeah. No, we'll know yeah. when it happens, lads, because that blue show, because <laughs> chat in the WhatsApp works yeah. blown. Yeah, yeah. It just is. What capital letters, enormous amounts of exclamation marks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's funny, I don't, think I've, I've, I don't think ever I've rated a player so highly that the majority, or at least before a few weeks ago, didn't rate at all. Um, but I've been with, with you since day one, Manny. <laughs> oh, well, uh, 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 a follow goes a long way, mate. It goes a long way. You said from day one that Mikel San Jose was the greatest footballer to ever grace Birmingham City. Not me, mate. Must be thinking of another Zach Woods. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this has been the Blues Focus podcast. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. Uh, you can also find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts as well, all through the Sports Social Network. Thank you guys for joining me once again. Uh, we'll be back 
after the Huddersfield game on Saturday, it's Sunday, maybe at a push. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll have a brighter podcast to talk about uh, after a good performance. Um, so yeah, you've been listening to Jamie Lawler and Zach Woods. Thank you. Yeah, man. <laughs> I always do that bit just for the audio because I know that um, people you don't really see the facial expressions obviously so it's not just like a nod or anything you need to do like a bit of a thank you thank you very much yeah or a bit of a piss off time we just wrap up the episode (laughs) (laughs) and i'm gonna do that right now thank you guys for listening (laughs) and keep right on keep Keep right on. on